What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I am going to show you how to create a widget open and close animation so that your UI looks smoother and more professional. It's going to be a very easy video to follow so let's get started. But first, if you are serious about learning and making your first game in Unreal Engine 5, join my Unreal Club. Inside, you will be able to download entire private files from my tutorials, enter private meetings and webinars with industry experts, access exclusive ebooks packed with the best tricks, get powerful asset frameworks to speed up your blueprints, and much more. The link is in the description. With that said, let's continue with the video. Alright, so the first thing that I'm going to do is right click on the content browser, go into user interface and create a new widget blueprint. So that user widget, call the wb underscore widget and to open this up. Now, of course, I'm creating a new widget just for this example. But if you already have a existing widget that you want to add this effect on, go ahead and open that up. All right. So in my case, I'm going to simply add a canvas panel. And this is very important. OK, this is going to be the parent of the whole UI. And it will have a very important parameter, which we will see in a second. And now I'm going to go ahead and just drag, for example, an image inside of this canvas panel and just expand this to be like the background. Let me put this like darker and maybe like 0.5 or something like that. And then I'm going to get another image once again. I'm going to just put it like this, put it on the center. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay, it's just creating a simple, um, you know, image just for testing this uh, open and close animation, right? Let me just go real quick and scroll down until the brush. So this to be around the box. OK, that works. And then I can get a text, put it inside, make it darker so I can see it. And then also the font just make it a bit bigger. There we go. All right. So we have this simple UI, right? It is terrible, but <laughs> it's just an example. OK, so right now, of course, let's go ahead and make sure that when we press a key on our keyboard, we will open this widget up and this can be anything. This can be the pause menu. This can be your inventory. This can be your, you know, equipment system, whatever it is, OK, that you can open and close. All right. So with that done, let's go ahead and open up the third person character blueprint. And I'm going to simply just do like, you know, when I press the E key. Right, I'm going to create this widget. Now, of course, once again, this is just an example. You can use what turkey you want for whatever widget you want. And I'm going to go ahead and just create a new widget, right? And this new widget will be something as WB widget. I'm going to add this to the viewport. And there we go. So right now, if I do this and press E, it just appears instantly and it just looks um, ugly, right? In terms of the pop up, not only the <laughs> the UI itself is ugly, but also the, the pop up, right? So let's go ahead and create a simple animation that will enable us to see this a bit easier, right? I'm also going to uh, lower the opacity. This is a bit better. All right. So the trick is going to be creating a new animation. So if you don't see this animations window, just go up into window and click on animations. Let's create a new animation and call this open. So if we select this new animation, we can go ahead and start to add keyframes. And here's where the canvas panel, AKA the parent of all my widget comes in. If I select the canvas panel and scroll down to the bottom, you will see this render opacity. This is essentially the alpha or opacity of this widget. So this is what we have to animate. All right. As you can see, it changes everything. I don't have to go individually one by one you know, setting the alpha of the text, then also simultaneously setting the alpha of the image, and then also at the same time, the background. No, 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 I can just use this value that will do everything. So of course, I start, it will be zero. So on our zero, zero, we can just add a keyframe. And then after, you know, maybe 25, uh, you know, 0.25 seconds, the render opacity will be one. Okay, so remember, this goes from zero to one. So this will be the second keyframe. And now as you can see, it's just a simple pop up. And we have to do exactly the same with close. So we will start at one, of course, and then go to 25 and put this on zero. Again, keyframe and boom, it goes this way, which is really cool. So everything's working, right? Just remember to always set by default this back to one so we can see it, right? Now, what I am going to do is the one thing which is on the event graph, 
go to the event construct. This is essentially the begin play of this widget. As you can see, we have a new category here for our animations. So automatically, once the widget is created and this event construct, you know, which is the begin play executes, I'm going to get the opening animation and, oh, well, you guessed it, play the actual animation. And that's it. If I now press uh, the E key, we have the widget opening up with a nice animation. Of course, <laughs> I'm stacking them up if I click pressing E, but that's one thing that you will need to check here. Now, I want to go ahead and just do the opposite, which is to play the closing animation whenever I want to close. So what I am going to do is break this and just promote this new widget into an variable. And this will be the widget, okay? So plug this over. Make sure to plug this in. And now I am only gonna go ahead and create a new widget if the current widget is not created. So I can just right click on the widget animation, uh, sorry, variable, and convert this into a validated get. So if this is not valid, AKA the widget is not on screen, I'm gonna create a new widget. But if it is valid, AKA the widget is on the screen, I am gonna go ahead and you simply get the widget and then get the close animation and just play the animation. So we can do it this way or also in here create a custom event called close widget. And this will go ahead and get the close animation and of course play the animation, okay? I usually do it this way because it's just a bit cleaner, but you can choose whatever you want. This means that in here we don't need to do this. We can directly just say close and that's it. It's just a bit faster, right? And obviously we also have to destroy the widget fully because otherwise it will still be there, but just, you know, hidden in a way. So I'm gonna add a little delay after the close widget um, custom event of two point, um, sorry, point 0.25, which is the duration of the animation. And then I can just say remove from parent. And that's it. This is the node that we used to remove widgets, by the way. And that's it. I can simply go ahead and set this to be um, nothing after also 0.25 seconds. Okay, and now the widget uh, will be empty and I can create again. So I press E, this opens up, I press E again, it closes with a nice animation. So that's it guys, if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it. If you could like the video and subscribe to my channel, you can download this exact product in my Unreal Club, so check it out with the link in the description. Now yes, with all I said, bye bye.